Hi. Hey, you know me well. <laughs> We've been friends for how long now? <laughs> We're on. We're on. We did it. Yeah. We're here. Oh, we did it. Complete and utter full warning. I have had far too much sugar tonight. And I am liable to crash. It's mine. It's 100% mine. We've been watching old anime from the early 2000s and been. drinking too much Coca Cola. I was not Being a teenager again. Coca Cola. <laughs> but hello! <laughs> it is Monday night, afternoon, night. But you all know what that means. It's time to cause problems on purpose. This is Going Critical, and you're watching Hellions of Karnak. I am your DM for the evening, Jess Taylor, and I am joined by my lovely array of players. If you guys would like to introduce yourselves. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Emily. Wait, hold on. I'm first, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. First. I'm Emily. Um, I'm... <laughs> I'm playing Xanth. He's a changeling. Sir. Um. Bah, 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 bah. I'm an artist. Uh, <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter on the link. Um. Doing fun facts today of what, what video games or characters would play that exist in real life. Um. Um. No, but, but I would. <laughs> I have one brain cell right now. I'm really sorry. I believe in you. No, you got <laughs> this. Yeah, you, you got this. this. You got this, Emily. I'm an artist. I was never meant to speak. Um... Hype in the chat. Hype in the chat for Emily. Yay, Emily. <laughs> um, Xanth, also me, because I play this game, we play Apex Legends. Uh, he, I think Nick and Jess specifically bullied me into uh, admitting that he would play Mirage. <laughs> <laughs> That's because, because me and Nick true. are problematic. <laughs> because it's true. And we would, he would also play it with Nick the person, not Tink. No. <laughs> Specifically Nick. No. <laughs> Tink wouldn't have a good time playing with Xanth. I would. <laughs> you, would you would have a good time playing with Xanth? <laughs> playing Emily, Apex with I Xanth, feel like yes. <laughs> you have to understand, Nick plays Apex with me, and me and Xanth would have very similar vibes playing video games. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like we now it, need to so. we need to stream Apex now with Emily in character and <laughs> Nick as her as their self themselves. I don't know, man. I don't I don't know if I can unleash that on the internet. People's opinions of me will change. <laughs> it, look, it's I'm, true. Not it's I'm not terrible at Apex, so I feel like I don't I can't play Z <laughs> Zanth in character. Oh, he he'd be too bad. Wow, what a fucking humble brag. I can't play in character in Apex because I'm just too good at video games. Yeah. <laughs> Look, you bring me on your show, you bully me. <laughs> you give we me a warlock pa pa patron. Get you me it. out of here. We love you. I appreciate I'm you done. so much, Emily. I'm done. <laughs> 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 I'm waiting to watch like Zan's little avatar disappear <laughs> as Emily like, <laughs> leaves the call. <laughs> Ned, you're up. <laughs> I'm up. Yeah. Jeez, I'm away for a week and I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, hey everyone, I'm Ned. Uh, you can find me on the internet as App and Ned Barnett. Um, I am a writer and artist. And uh, last week I. I spent the well. I spent the last week learning how to do oil painting, so I will very soon be a halfway decent oil paint person. Um, yeah, and I play Monty. Uh, he is our. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I got distracted by the by the dude Grammy. Um, <laughs> I'm I sorry. Uh, I play Monty. He is a half half elf rogue who is having some trouble uh, in that he is currently a cat. And keeps turning into a cat. He doesn't really know why. Um, and uh, Monty would not play video games, not from like not wanting to play them, but because uh, his father didn't let him have video games, so he doesn't know what they are. Um, and yeah, 
can't develop backstory for an AU. This is, <laughs> you Why not? Do what have I been doing the whole time with this character? Developing backstory. <laughs> no, that's, that's what it'd be. He wouldn't know what video games are. Um, it would be very sad. And <laughs> someone would be like, hey, play, play this video game. I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I pressing buttons? <laughs> Poor boy. Sorry, I was gone. My brain is gone. Dude, it's it's not even like we're just, we're just, we just like us. this. Yeah, thank you, Danny. <laughs> I will I will tack on to Ned's introduction that Monty's cat count is currently up to four transformations into a cat. Yes. Yes. I will uh. be keeping a running cat count. Okay. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Uh, hi, I'm Danny. I play Yenna. You can find me on Twitter at Vash Lane. I'm a freelance illustrator, I guess. That's what you we're are. Doing. I mean, you are. Continue. I mean, <laughs> increasingly, just sort of like I hang out on the internet chronically online. Um, but yeah, uh, Yenna. Yenna plays League of Legends because she's just that kind of Korean. Um, <laughs> And she probably plays Annie, and she insists on going mid, even though that's not where Annie does best. Uh, and she blames everybody else for her failures, because, again, she's perfect. It's a bold choice to be like, my character play this, plays this game all the time and badly. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think so she's, she's probably... League of Legends. Yeah. No, I don't oh, think just she... against the meta. It doesn't mean bad. Yeah. But she like, you have to be, badly, you have right? to be truly good to go against the meta. Obviously, it's like when you pick yeah. Pikachu in like a high end uh, Smash Bros. Okay, first of all, don't call me out like this. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh. sorry, I was watching Smash Bros. stuff recently. You're good. <laughs> um, hi everybody, I'm Dodger. Uh, I play Yuli. Yuli, I keep wanting to say Yuli's an anxiety wizard, but she's more of a rogue now, which is super weird. Um, and uh, kind of similar to Monty, but I think uh, Yuli's like primary parent probably, you know, would have all of the um, the games that are preloaded on the computer. And that was it. So Yuli probably got really good at like spider solitaire <laughs> and <laughs> games like that. Uh, I don't know that she would have interest in in playing anything beyond that. They would be kind of like just simple like comfort games like solitaire. Nice. What are the, the demo Windows games? Like the the snowboarder yeah. extreme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking like wasn't. Yeah, it was like that 3D pinball that was Please. really oh my good. God, yes. Please tell me that Yenna used to play, play like, sorry, that Yuli used to play like the 1995 encyclopedia games. Where it was oh. like you were asked a question and then you were thrown into like a little maze for a little while. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Yenna, Yenna heard about Frog Fractions and then bailed when she found out it was a game that wasn't about fractions. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe we're referencing frog fractions. <laughs> fucking D&D. Welcome to D&D. I will never not reference frog fractions. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I'm, I was no, just saying, I don't know what that is too. Okay. It's fine, don't worry. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, and yeah, hello. I I am Nick, um, at Nickterhorst, slash at Nick Tattoos, uh, everywhere. And I play Tink who is a high elf uh, artificer cleric. And I I think there really is only one answer for an artificer and it is Minecraft. He plays he plays Minecraft. Uh he he takes breaks for other games, you know, like building base games like that kind of thing. But like he always he always come back to Minecraft, I think. Maybe some Stardew mm -hmm. Valley in there somewhere, but he doesn't know you can romance people. <laughs> oh what that's the best part Tink. <laughs> it's okay he'll oh, eventually no. uh become roommates with uh <laughs> with uh, yeah yeah 
accidentally, just from like, man, this guy likes cool shit. I'll give him the cool <laughs> shit. Oh my god. Is there an NPC that you guys would like to know about? Al. <laughs> Calriel is the kind of gay who just sits in his room and plays The Sims. <laughs> okay, I actually legitimately, I'm putting you on the spot, but I would really like to see what Hex plays. I, I what Hex like... plays? Hex plays Fortnite. Hex is really good at building. Oh, damn it. <laughs> and is now super goddamn mad that building is no longer in Fortnite. It's That's okay. what I, Hex plays. Hex, it gonna, is. It, it's just one mode, just, I think. It's a different mode. Yeah. Yeah. There's no build mode. Okay. Well, now she only plays building mode. And will specifically yell at 12 year olds. Perfect. Right. Of course she does. That's all I ever wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like once Monty finds out that you can yell at 12 year olds in video games, he would just sit there and yell at them. Like, Xanth would be playing, but yeah. he'd just sit, on, uh, sit and just yell at all the children. It's like the fucking scene from Avengers where Thor picks up the mic. <laughs> like, and you... <laughs> yes. You are all terrible people, and I, I, I wash my hands of you. I never um... claim to be a good person. <laughs> no. Do we have any announcements? Anyway. I'm very sexy. Nice. Thank you, Ned. I know that. I'm glad that we can always rely on Ned to yell that at the announcement. Part. <laughs> always rely on Ned to have an announcement. Yeah. PSA, in case you didn't know. Yeah. No one else got anything. No, no books coming out. No. Just you. No flash up. No. Oh, no. actually, yeah. I the book that I my next comic is in, uh, Young Men in Love, is. Uh, being released in the first week of July now. Um, we had a printing delay, so it was postponed two weeks, but you should get it and read it. I wrote a really lovely story about um, uh, realizing that you are trans in while well, in a long-term uh, seemingly heterosexual relationship. Um, and it was illustrated by a, a lovely, like, it was it illustrated so beautifully by um, an artist named Ian Bisbal, um, and Bisbal, I got Ian's name wrong, uh, and it's it's so good. Ian like took my words and made them like gorgeous, and I cry. So, aww, uh, July six, I believe. Thanks. Wonderful. Yeah. I guess I have a little announcement. It's. Uh... <sighs> I'm I'm gonna start an online store for my crochet shit. Oh, um, I'm gonna start selling. Uh, I'm I've been really into making like bookmarks, which is a weird thing to do with crocheting, but uh, and dice bags, which I've been making for a long time, and I'm just gonna finally make an actual store of some kind. So it's not just awesome. Yeah, yelling awesome. about it <laughs> because Etsy is not just it's not a good place to just passively do things. Oh god, no. <laughs> yeah. So, we're gonna make an actual effort. <laughs> nice. Um, and... So that'll be coming out next week, or next month. But... Yeah, and, and because uh, just forcibly added me. Uh, yes, I did I did drop a new Flash page for my tattoos. Um, <laughs> and it's here. But also, if you go through there, um, there are links to my friend's pre-order for figures that the tattoos are based on as well and they're just really cute they're called fashion cats and they're adorable they <laughs> big, are super cute big recommend like that's it so um and i as always have a couple of announcements my book is out right now yay um, Galaxy of the Prettiest Star. It's at a bookstore near you if you can bully them into finding it. It's been sold out in quite a few places, so getting it online is kind of the more reliable way at the moment. But it's available at Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, like, you can get it anywhere. It's very queer, it's very trans, it's very... Good? I mean, we've had good reviews, so... It's very good, you... it's very pretty, it's very heartfelt. <laughs> Um, people should check it out. It's it's and great. there's an adorable corgi. There is yeah. an adorable corgi. I mean, honestly, like I knew the art was gonna be good because it's just, but the story is actually really great too. So. 
I haven't got my room. copy yet. It has Thank mine you. just showed up. <laughs> Yay! Hey, hey, finally! Got, yeah, no, the pre-orders were delayed in the UK for quite a while. Um, but on top of that, I have another thing coming mm -hmm. out. Um, I did the cover for the new Doctor Who comics, following Ooh. the Fugitive Doctor. And I did a cover for issue number four, which is currently up for pre-order at your local comic retailer. So wow. if you're interested in grabbing a cover from me for that, that's that's where you go and what you do. Jess Taylor, Doctor Who. It's there. That rhymes. Did it? Yeah. Yeah. Jess cool. Taylor, Doctor Who. You know what to do. <laughs> well, dang. Okay. Jess Taylor, Doctor Who. Uh... You know what to do. <laughs> oh, I yeah. share consciousness. <laughs> Um, with all of that said and done, I shall quickly run through our warnings, which is that uh, we are a live play theater of the mind D&D session, which means that this is coming to you guys live as it happens, and therefore we cannot give you warnings before an episode. So while we as players practice safety and Ding. We ask that you guys at home do the same, and if you come across anything that is um, uncomfortable subject matter or makes you feel uh, as though it's difficult to sit and watch, please don't be afraid to take a step away. Don't feel obligated to sit and watch the end of the episode. If you need a moment, take a moment. We have a Discord where you can bring it to our attention, especially if you feel that it's something that should be tagged and discussed. But our Discord is also just a really nice, friendly place, so it's worth going and hanging out there for a little while anyway. Um, the other warning is that we are a mature stream, and we do deal with language, adult themes, sex and drugs, guys. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. It's it's here. And um, the DM is allowed to say fuck, so... <laughs> what? I didn't know that. You can say fuck. <laughs> I'm not allowed to say podcast. fuck. How dare you? <laughs> My kid watches this show. <laughs> <laughs> and Why we is get Sam it? watching the show? <laughs> <laughs> your kid is your dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so sh are, are we all good to jump in? Does anybody have anything else that they would like to say? Well, yeah, I what the straight? fuck happened last week? <laughs> oh, we'll oh wow. Well, yeah, you're about to find out. <laughs> last time on Hellions of Karnak, explanations were found, alliances were forged, broken, and forged again as Ilya tried to win the favor of the Hellions by playing a game of 20 questions. And after being plied with a curse, it was revealed that Yuli had a part to play in the loops, and Belial was perhaps trapped outside of time. Ilya handed over two journals and left the group with the knowledge that the tiny gold skulls they'd been finding were some kind of power source. On leaving the morgue and heading back to the hotel, the Hellions found out Cariel Goldpedal, Tink's brother, had been arrested while investigating the doppelgangers. Sensing trouble, Yenna headed off to the embassy to ask the attention of her mother. Armed with new research, Tink settled in to unravel the threads. And we dive right in. Oh. As I... Take a very big breath. Yeah, I was going to say, did you breathe? Oh, that you takes, I don't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> so you all retired back to the hotel last night. Ish. Ish. Wow. <laughs> oh my god. Ish. Yeah, not, not Yenna. Yenna yeah. slept at the embassy. Yeah. It's like the couch somewhere. Indeed, and you all fell asleep, if you recall. Ish. To find ish. <laughs> okay, yeah, ish. <laughs> <laughs> to find yourselves enveloped in the same dream. Ish. And you had followed a small black cat up a set of stairs while enveloped in a void. Xanth. Monty, Yana, Yuli. Am I am I am I my normal self or am I a cat in this? You are a cat. We're still Excellent. on the fourth cat count. And you'd come to a door. And Yuli, I believe you decided to step through the door. I 
think we, we all, all did. we all did yeah yeah which one of you goes first i remember it being me but i don't want to i think it was xanth too yeah that's that's yeah. what my memory is telling me i think xanth oh. went first and then the rest of us were like yeah we'll follow yeah As you step through the doorway, Xanth, it's like the void falls away. And as each of you follow, you get the same sensation, as though gravity has been turned on its head and pulled out from under you. Around you, in the dark, buildings rise. Giant monuments to long-lost civilizations seem to form out of the darkness of shadows and stars. And you find yourself on a platform beneath an archway. Looking out on a quiet city at night. Do we recognize the city? Roll me a history check, which okay. historically this group is great at. Yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna I say. have a plus five in history. I should be good at this. I have a plus four. You are a cat. I know. So I'm rolling my I'm rolling on my my cat wisdom of minus no. three minus four. Don't, don't Jared's keep their own in, like mindsets, right? Yeah. I thought that they usually more. do. Oh, but he's anxiety attacks because. <laughs> Because Monty has been subject to anxiety attacks, and that is how his wild shape has been triggered, he has to succeed in a wisdom save to become himself again. Okay. Which you can roll right now if you would like to, Monty. Oh, yes, please. Go for it. Uh, wisdom save, I got a yes. 13. You are no longer a cat. Am I still a cat in form, or am I am I myself in brain, or am I myself? You are yourself. Okay, I'm gonna reroll my my history check then, or can I reroll my history check? Yeah, I'll allow you to. Thank so everybody you. who wants to roll a history check, roll one. Okay, so that twenty like plus six. Oh my god. <laughs> Yuna has one Hell thing yeah. she's good at. It's brains. And Yuli, you got a 10. Yep. <laughs> I got a 10 as well. Yena. Hmm. You recognize the layout of the buildings that are below you. It didn't look like this the last time you were here, but this is the strange world that you had all stepped into before the loop reset. Ah. Are we like at a ledge kind of situation or? Yes, you appear to be on some sort of floating platform, which you remember from said world were quite common. Although when you last visited this place, these platforms were wreckage. Oh. Now they seem highly structured with staircases leading down to certain parts of the city or connecting them to other platforms that are moving. And where's our little cat friend? The little black cat is already setting off, walking down a series of steps. Okay. Uh, Yana's gonna like kind of huddle close to Yuli and just be like, "Oh God, I want to be here again." Again? What? What's this place? This is this. This is this spooky place from when. I think you were dead. You're right. Oh no, he, yeah, he... I... Oh right. Um, um No no but 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 you are you are right, yes. That is exactly where we are. Yeah, I I hate it here. <laughs> it's kind of pretty. You can see that yeah. actually a multitude of the buildings in the city are made of this glittering obsidian glass that twinkle slightly in the in the starlight very similar to the last time you were here 
you cannot hear a single sound. We can hear each other? You can hear each other. But you cannot hear the normal sounds that you would associate with a city. Um, can Yana look around to try to find, like, there was the one big building that we ended up in at, towards the end of that, that loop, right? Reasonably recognizable? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you want me to roll for it? Yeah, go ahead and um, roll me a survival. Survival? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 13. 13. With a 13, it's difficult to pick out which of the platforms it would have been, especially because you're coming at the city from a slightly different angle. Mm. The only reason that you'd recognize the city at all was that there are several buildings that were mostly intact that you can recognize the architecture of but it you struggle to put yourself in relation to where everything was last time uh, um so we we're we're like up above like we're looking down at it is that correct yes you are on a platform above the city um, can I conjure, uh, binoculars to try yes, and get a of course you closer can. look and see, cause we, we've lost the cat, correct? We don't know where the cat is. The cat had started going down several steps, but by this point, yes, you would have lost sight of the cat. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to use the binoculars to kind of look around and see, if I can find the cat, if I see it, if I see, like, if this is a, a place that we've been before, like, do these, do some of these creatures just, like, hang here? <laughs> like, yeah, you can conjure a pair of binoculars. By drawing the weave through you, you manage to create a small pair of spy glasses. They're quite similar to opera glasses. They've got, like, <laughs> the little stick to hold. Perfect. Um, okay, what do I see? Should I roll like investigation or? You can roll uh, investigation with advantage, considering you have a tool to help you. Okay. <laughs> a twenty-four. Here we go, baby. <laughs> hey. Hot damn! Hot diggity dang! That is a roll. The moment that you put the binoculars to your eyes you can see that standing on several of the buildings away from you are figures, humanoid figures. They all appear to have gold masks. There are five of them in total. Wait, wait, notes, hold on. <laughs> That's how many there were, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. There are f five. Uh, I'm what? not. I'm not. I'm not crazy, right? It should like hand the binoculars uh, to Yenna. Do you see? Are there there are five people, right, with the gold masks? And 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 Ilya. Ilya said that there were that there were five, right? Uh, I I take the binoculars. Do I see them as well? You do. You see five figures who are standing on isolated buildings, almost equidistant apart around you all. Mm who each possess a gold mask. Are they, what do they ask look like? Do they look like the things we found? Like each one is like the skulls? Roll me a perception just to see if you can make out the details. Sure. Oh. Uh, 14. You can do it with advantage because you have the binoculars, sorry. Nice. Uh, 19. With a 19, you can make out the closest. Okay. Two of the figures are quite far away from you. Like, they're equidistant, but they're on lower buildings. So it's mm. a little difficult to get a proper read on them. The three that you can see, one wears a human mask. One wears a cat mask and is actually in the direction that the black cat had walked. 
and the other one, the third one, wears a rat mask. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, that's not creepy as fuck. Um, okay. Are we really here? Is this a dream? Can it be a dream? I prefer that really heavily. I mean, can... Mm. I think it's a yeah. bit of both. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think it's like last time. Last time okay. we, we, we were, we were here, like, like for real, you, you know. Um, well, last time when we were here, things reset, and and Tink's not here, and and Balthazar's not here. So I, I don't, I don't want the things to reset right now. No, 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 no. I, don't, I don't think they are. I don't think they are. I think, I think. They're trying to contact us. Um, uh, I don't know what. What should we do? To <laughs> Zan. It's just like, what? Why are you looking at me? Um, <laughs> can I see if he like gestures to the binoculars? Yeah. Uh. Uh. Can I? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I look at, try to focus and look, you know, one of them in particular and see if I can maybe have the perception roll geared towards that, if that's a possibility? Yeah, go for it. And again, well, if it's physical you details it's that you're looking you for. <laughs> what did you say? Are you trying to see if it's the one you've met? Like, actually, like... Well, no, I think it's the one I met. I just want to know, like... um, I don't know if this is more of an insight, but I just... I want to know if it's trying to gesture to us or if it's like looking expectantly at a place for us to walk or something like that. I won't even make you roll for this because the moment that you pick up the binoculars and try to look in the direction of the cat, it is on the roof in front of you. Like it's closer? Yeah, it didn't move. It's just there. Hey, buddy. <laughs> How's it going? Hello, friend. Um, we are still friends. Yeah, you saved our life. And it gives a slow nod. I... The bright green eyes from behind the mask are watching each of you in turn. Is this like... Oh, shivers. <laughs> <laughs> Is this like the principal's office? Are we in trouble right now? We wish, simply, for you to watch. I bring you gifts. Like a good friend. I, I, I don't have gifts, but it's really nice. Yeah, you see the cat. Good friend. <laughs> <What's he mean? laughs> roll, roll insight. Sans, roll insight. Oh, shit. <laughs> You pissed him off. <laughs> oh, my thing isn't working. Let me get Google Dice. Uh, um, Eleven. Oh, let's see. Well, my D and D Beyond rolled and it's a ten. So wait, no, seven. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> In, <laughs> you in, went through three numbers there. In which okay. I jump in to say Xanth has been given an inspiration by okay. Mighty Beacon. Oh, chat. you have indeed. I don't know. Would you, you like? Would you like to add a D eight to your roll? No. If it's a seven, no. If it's a ten, maybe. <laughs> so I rolled. My D and D Beyond was lagging, so I rolled in Google, and that was an eleven. And then I rolled in. It showed up in D and D Beyond, so it was a seven. So that's, I feel like that's your I'll, call. I will allow the Google roll. Okay. <laughs> then I will add a D8 to it. <laughs> then go ahead and use your inspiration. All right, thank you. Who did that? It was Mighty that Deacon. That was Mighty, yeah, Mighty Deacon. Thank you. I know I sounded really aggressive when I asked if it was... <laughs> who cares? Who, who um, did this? Who, who was it? Yes. 14 total. <laughs> A 14? Mm -hmm. With a 14 insight, you can see that 
whatever face lies behind the mask, which you can see the barest details of, looks hurt. Is it like looking at Monty or looking at me? <laughs> it's looking between both of you. But still, it reaches beneath its cloak and pulls out five little skulls to hand to you. Are they all... These, oh, yeah. they are not gold. They are different. Do I recognize the material? You do. They appear to be made out of the same material as each of your stones. Um, are they all different? Like animals or like human skull or like... They are only cat skulls. Okay. I'll pass everyone, assuming that I know everyone's... Uh, thank yeah, you. You, you would have one left over for Tink. I'll put it in my... Um... Thanks, Steve. Is... Is this... I... <laughs> is this you... uh is this do you need a help from us is this like a council and we can are you like a council member or some... these something these are like that? these are a sign of my affection and he pushes your hand like closer to yourself the one that's holding the cat skull anyway. with this you may you may reach me it's like the Rocky but Talkies. Before... Roll Arcana. <laughs> oh my god. Google's being slow again. Or D&D Beyond's being slow again, so I'm going to do Google. Just... Okay. okay. That's a five. Um... <laughs> yeah, can You can have no idea us? if they're like the Rocky Talkies. You can all roll Lock Honor if you would like to. Yeah, I think yes. probably both Yuli and Yenna would be like, what the <laughs> fuck are these? <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, 24. Auntie rolled a 14. A 17. Monty, Yenna, Yuli. You, you can surmise that the weave that is present in these stones so it's difficult to pick out from the background magic of this dream in general is definitely the same as the sending stones that you have possession of and you see that the figure in the cat skull steps backwards towards the edge of the ledge and turns its back on all of you and holds out a hand and just says, watch. Wait, what, what do we call you? Do you, have a, do you have a name? It doesn't turn. Roll me a persuasion. That's... Twinned. That's twinned. Yeah, we didn't quite get that. 27. 27. 27. Oh, man. Yeah. Holy heck. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm, a very charis deck. I'm a very charismatic boy. <laughs> <laughs> the cat doesn't turn to you. He still continues to stand there, back turned, looking out at the city. But he does say, I have no name, I am but an aspect. You were those with titles. You want and around you the city seems to shake. What do, you, what do you mean, titles? As the city starts to rumble and you see the buildings start to quiver where they stand. 
the cat leaps from the ledge. And across from you, the figures that you'd seen through the monoculars, they're gone. Instead, you see a lonely figure out in the waters of the dock on what appears to be some sort of fortress built in the cove. And it's simply a speck, but around them destruction rises. The waves crash and climb and crash and climb and all of the buildings outward shatter, rising up into the sky, creating platforms that seem far more familiar than the ones you had in front of you just moments before. I want to go. And the weave seems to form a vortex around that figure that spreads outwards, stripping the city of all color. Can I race towards the figure? Or try to run towards the figure? If you try to run towards the figure, you are on a platform at the moment that leads to several other buildings. Even mm -hmm. if you try to run towards them, you would have to cross several rooftops without bridges. I'm, uh, I'm a rogue, I'm gonna try it. Roll for parkour! <laughs> That's an acrobatics roll. Uh, that did not, not go well. No! I got a nine. You got a nine? Yeah. You make it the first building. You make it the second. But the third one, you leap and miss. And now you're falling. Um, I use my feather fall item. I once per long rest feather fall. You can, you can definitely do that. You need to, um, strike it off as used this long rest. Yeah. Monty, you feel comforting weave wrap around you and your fall immediately slows. And you see that below you, what you are falling into, are a multitude of people on the street who appear to be frozen. Do I recognize any of the people? Roll me perception. Hold on, I'm taking notes. <laughs> Alrighty, what is that one? That's a 14. A 14? Mm-hmm. You can see Ilya. Frozen as though in mid-step. Pushing through two people on the side of the street as though he'd been caught mid-flight. There's no sign of life. Ilya's is still as a statue and robbed of all colour. Painted in shades of grey. And I, as I'm slowly falling, can I do another look-see? Look I will say not. Okay. That was all that you could pass from the road street that you are falling into. Sorry, could you repeat that? That was all that you could see from the street that you're falling into. Cool. What are the rest of you doing? You've just seen Monty drop. You leave, you've you know that your magic has caught Monty. Okay. Um, is there a way for us to get down there? You can try and parkour it like Monty did. 
Uh, Roll me um, investigation to try and find another way. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> can <laughs> can the rest of us do it as well, or just uh, um, yeah, yeah. No, you, if you want to band together, you can roll with advantage. Okay, I'll just give you advantage because you definitely have a higher intelligence. <laughs> okay, I'll roll again. No, it was a nine. Seventeen is the highest. Seventeen. Yeah. With seventeen, there is what appears to be a fire escape on your building. The fucking bitch could have just taken the ladder. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Look ooh, we'll take it. We'll take it. I'll like usher everybody toward there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. We'll climb. Yeah. Oh, can I have a uh, feather fall uh, prepared just in case? You can indeed. Thanks. So, Not a problem. Just in case somebody slips. The closer that you climb down to street level, you also become aware of the people in the street, of the figures. A lot of them are simple citizens. Roll me perception, all of you. I self included. No, stop trying to roll again. You've seen your street. <laughs> Uh, Eight. Three. How did I get the highest? <sighs> you got them peepers wide open. Oh, man. <laughs> Jen is too busy trying to make sure no one falls. <laughs> Yuli. Yeah, Yuli, Yenna, all you see are the citizens who appear to be frozen. Xanth. You see your brother. Frozen in a tableau in which there is a knife pressed against his throat. Two Who's guard that? holding him by the arms. He's being held by two guards? And they're holding yep. a knife against his throat? Yep. How far away is he? Um, he's at the end of the street. So, so about 30 yeah. feet. Oh, 30 feet? Yep. Oh, you shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> cast Awaken Mind to him. And just, Sander, can you hear me? An echoing nothingness comes back. Okay. It's as though you'd called into a cave and received only the echo of your voice. Uh, interesting. What are you all doing? You're you're on ground level by now. Yeah, I mean, I would try and find Monty. Yeah. yeah. Is is he close to us, or do we have to walk away? Wait, are we on the ground? Or are we on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're on. So. You're on the ground level. You're on the ground level. You know that Monty dropped three buildings away from you, so you mm -hmm. need to be like three streets over. Um, this is a weird question, but have we actually touched the street? Like, yes. Okay, I was just wondering if it's like, <laughs> we're gonna turn into statues or something. <laughs> no, no. You have touched the- you've touched the ground floor. Okay. I know this is a weird question, because uh, I already kind of got my information for the history check, but like, mm -hmm. is there any way we're like, Yena having seen it now in like, a more pristine version, and then like, down on the ground level, is there any chance like recognizes this from like lore or anything like that? Like myth? Roll me another history check. Sure. Uh, that is going to be a nineteen. A nineteen? Uh yeah. With... Okay. With a nineteen. There's something about it that niggles familiarity at the back of your mind. And it mm. takes you a moment of truly searching and thinking before you realize that in one of the plays that you've gone to see with your family when you were much younger, mm -hmm. um, 
there were mentions of a land at the end of time. Okay. So this conceptually makes sense. Okay. Uh. Hmm. There aren't many details that you can draw on from that story. It was very much mentioned in passing. Right. Um, you do remember that it was also mentioned that it is a place where no soul lives. Do um do we have any reason to believe that like this is sort of mirroring like we're in a frozen moment and this is sort of mirroring like where people are in reality like in this frozen moment roll me Roll me a straight up intelligence check. Mm -hmm. And then roll me an arcana. <laughs> okay, Can I gotta you see the duck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <very distracting. laughs> Have we got a duck playing? <laughs> Um, so one of my alarms to duck. <laughs> oh my god, it's an alarm. That's so much better. Um, okay, my intelligence check was a dirty 20 and my arcana is an 11. With your intelligence, you can look around and see that while the layout of the city from what you can see around you doesn't seem to be anything that would be familiar in Karnak, There are places and stores and faces that, while they're not people that you know very well, certainly would not be out of place in Karnak. Okay. However, you do not know of any spell or any sort of magical resource that would cause something like this um, time magic would... is considered a big taboo on this sort of a scale right i would i would blah that i would say all of that to yena because yena is better about that stuff than i am <laughs> can you think uh... of any kind of uh, anything that could do this like like these are mm. these are these are places that we've been to. Like these are, and and not not here, but like out there. Yeah, it's this is so strange. It's like everything's converging, but it's wrong. I I, I wish I, I need I need all of you to make a deck save, <laughs> including Monty. Is he still falling? <laughs> He's like feather falling. Yeah. Yeah, Monty is still feather falling, but I still need Monty to make a deck safe. <laughs> yeah, and I got a 10. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I got when the DM six. says, uh oh. Mm -hmm. I got a 7. <laughs> Listen, am I going to have, am I rolling my con again? <laughs> my deck's is really good, too. <laughs> like, my dex is good too. I just rolled really well, we just shit. rolled terrible. <laughs> that tornado of weave that you had seen around the platform and fortress out in the cove washes through all of you. And you wake up. It's a jarring moment where your eyes open and you realize that the sun is streaming through the window. You are awake. You are still in the hotel. 
apart from Yenna. <laughs> I, I would like to to say that uh, because I was previously a cat before before waking up, I was probably sleeping on Xanth's chest, and I, so I just woken up like like full size Monty just like sprawls on top of Xanth. That's a good visual. I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I'm gonna push Monty off of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Xanth, as you as you push Monty off of you, one, make me a strength check. Oh god, come on, not why do we always roll strength checks against each other? <laughs> <laughs> because it's funny. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh eleven. <laughs> Um, with an 11, you can push Monty off, but you do hear a clink as something skitters across the floor. Is it? Is it one of the skulls? <laughs> it is one of the skulls. Is it mine or? It's Monty's. I'm gonna. Yours is on the pillow next to you. I'm gonna pocket put Monty's on his back. Wait, where did you put it on my back? Yeah. Are you awake or are you still sleeping? I'm I'm awake. You Oh. I I'm wide awake. I'm like, what are you what are you doing? Wait, you were fucking on top what do you mean what am I doing? What do you mean I was on I was what what do you mean I I'm I'm really c confused. Um how did I get here? I uh, it's you've been turning into a cat. It's I yeah I that that explains why I can't remember stuff um turning into a cat I what turning into a cat I don't I don't I don't I don't understand at all I don't I don't fucking understand either what do you <laughs> why would I oh, know gimme. I'm not. I don't think you would know. I mean, you know more magic than I do. I don't know magic at all. I don't. I don't even know if that's true. Can I get you guys to roll stealth for your argument if you are trying to be stealthy? I'm not trying to be stealthy. <laughs> I'm not trying to be stealthy either. But I did make a very good stealth roll. <laughs> Passive stealth. <laughs> Yuli, you wake up to hear. Those two arguing in the next room over. Yuli is filled with relief to to hear people she recognizes, <laughs> even if it is even That's if it's pitching at each other. <laughs> oh my god, this is such a different reaction to getting fucking suplex. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, feels good. Um I think uh Yuli wants like the fog of oh fuck sort of you know, went away to uh, grab the journal again that directly connects to Yenna's and just write, are you okay? Yenna, across town towards, like, the Cross District, which is where the embassies are located, you have woken to an empty room with the soft sounds of an office that is waking up. You still have the notebook from last night in your hands. Um, and On top I... of it is a little crystal skull. I'm gonna look at the skull and just be like, Ugh, and just, like stick it in a pocket. And then uh, as the message appears, we'll reply and be like, yeah, uh, how about you? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. Um, the boys are fighting, so, you know, it's normal. Right, okay, that, that's good. Nobody got stuck or anything weird. N no, 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 no. I, th I think everybody's here. I'll check on Tink and um, I'll, I'll message you. Okay, I gotta go figure this out because I don't know why I'm still here. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, she will actually like get up and be pissed the fuck off that she's still here. <laughs> <laughs> it's morning. <laughs> It is morning. Yeah. You see left on the receptionist desk 
that had once housed somebody that you spoke to last night, there is instead um, a little plate with some breakfast pastries um, and some drink to the side, a tea that has probably gone cold, and a glass of water, and a small note. So go and inspect the note. Did I cut out? No, you didn't. You didn't cut out. It's fine. Oh. Um, in inspecting the note, you find it written meticulously, um, and it it just says that the receptionist had tried to wake you upon being able to find a connection with your mother, um, and that unfortunately they were only able to get through to her secretary. But should you still wish to talk to her, there is a room set up aside for you with directions to said room. Upon reading that her mother was not unreachable and they could only get in contact with the secretary, she's going to shred the paper. It's like confetti it in a little bit, like. Ah! Damn it. <laughs> you uh, hear a soft chuckle from the doorway that leads into the reception area. I'm gonna look over. Who is it? Is it just a rando? <laughs> it appears to be so, yes. You see um, a young woman who's about your age um, who is dressed very smartly is just chuckling at you slightly. It's a different person from last night, but it appears as though she's settling in for the morning for the reception work. Uh, Yenna will, like, stand up really straight and, like, kind of just force herself into, like, being, like, a proper young lady. And she's like, sorry, I just, it's very annoying that, that my mother is so busy all the time. You see the receptionist gives you quite a low bow and is like, there's no need to apologize. I can understand that such things are quite often frustrating. Mm. Uh, was there anything that we could help you with this morning? I was left a note um, that said that you had required one of our contact rooms. Yeah, I, I, I need to speak, um, I guess, with my mother's secretary. And then um, I probably need... a. Uh, forms uh, just for expedited travel back to um, uh, Gehuang and uh, probably just uh, took maybe some exp expedited visas. Oh, um, I was informed that any expedited travel would be for yourself alone. Um, I probably need five additional visas. Five? Yes. You can hear the trepidation in her voice. And she it's... kind of sits in her chair and then rises again because she realizes that sitting in your presence is rude. Mm -hmm. um, and scrambles to try and find several sheets of paperwork. And it's like, and um, these five visas, who would they be for? Um, I need one. I don't think. I don't know Yuli's last name. <laughs> Off the top of my head. I don't yeah, think sure. any of us do. I'm yeah, sure, I, I'm sure I Yana mean, would know um, it. Yeah. 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 Uh, are these but, are these people that you have contact with? Could they? Um, and she pushes the forms towards you. Mm. You you must understand that expedited visas often take at least 48 hours and we would need to know the extenuating circumstances I can find that information however can we make it 24? <laughs> 20, 24? yeah I, I can try and do that yeah I, I can I can see if we can um, obviously it's it's out of my hands and it's it's down to the visa office but I can certainly impress upon them the urgency of the situation I'm sure if you talk to the head of office that it is for, 
um, the Moon Trading Company, and that these would be special guests of our clan that would help things along. Uh, of course, I'll, I'll make them. I'll make them very aware. Excellent. Very, I very will aware. tell my mother's secretary that you are going to help us with this matter, and I will. Um, and I'm just gonna look to see does she have like a name tag or anything to indicate her name. She does not because she wasn't ready to start work yet. Mm. Um, what's your name so that I can let them know who to contact? You're you're far too kind. Um, you're you're far too kind. Uh, you don't you don't need my name, and you get the impression she doesn't want to leave her name in case mm-hmm. this all goes south. Um, as she kind of scurries off. She's walking backwards very quickly and is like, I should, no time for, for pleasantries like that. I should go to speak to the visa office. And she's gone. <laughs> um, but you definitely get the impression that that was her covering herself in case this all goes very wrong very <laughs> fast. Yeah, and I was just going to be like, <sighs> She and... has, however, left her bag on the side. Mm. Okay. Um, it's just like a purse or something like that. Yeah, it's just like a book bag. Okay. Um, Yana is definitely gonna just, just open it up, look at it, see if there's a wallet, just to check the ID. There is a wallet there. And um, the ID that you find inside, it's a worn piece of paper, and you can make out the name Lee Hae Kim. Perfect. She just sort of smiles to herself and puts it all back so it doesn't look like anybody's ruffled through it. And <laughs> uh, wanders off to the uh, the room that's been set aside. I would like you to roll for me sleight of hand to put that all back. Sure. <laughs> Natural 20. Oh my god. Oh my you goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to put today. it all. Yeah, you you managed to put it all back perfectly. In putting it all back perfectly, you find a tiny skull made of gold. Uh, what kind of skull? It is a viper. We didn't see any Snickers with the uh, people, right? But we couldn't identify two. You couldn't identify two. Um, There was a viper in the conversation where Ilya had shown you each of the individual skulls that Ilya had possessed. Okay. Um... Cool. She's going to make a mental note that this person uh, might be sus, so she will just save that for later. Um, could I get that name typed out for me just because my brain is bad? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Thank Lee you. Haken, and I'll, put it, I'll pop it in your notes. Thank you. All right. Um, but yeah, so she'll have that info and run away. Little bastard. Would you like to go to the contact room? Yes, please. There were directions given to you on the note. Yeah, but she shredded, but that's fine. <laughs> Roll me Yana's... a survival. And we'll see <laughs> if it's fine. Mm, Yana's smart. She can remember <laughs> things. Maybe. Nope. <laughs> I was going to say survival's no. wisdom. <laughs> yeah, which is not great at. Uh, so that's a nine. <laughs> okay, with a nine, you set to try and find the contact rooms. Mm-hmm. And very swiftly realize that for whatever reason, someone built these embassies like a labyrinth. <laughs> You could be sometime across town, back at the hotel. Tink, 
What are you doing? You were given two journals from Yuli last night to look through, along with several pieces of information that you'd managed to steal from two Lyles, one of your current timeline and one of a different timeline. So, first of all, one of those Belial journey- journals was given to me very legitimately. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, he spent the night uh, reading the journals. Um, all, all journals. He did a lot of reading last night. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, do do you want me to go to go into it, or should we just breeze by that? Oh no, no, no! I think I think we should go into it. <laughs> so, but how much? Because he's not going to say anything to anyone about what was in any of those <laughs> until interrogated. <laughs> I think it stands to reason, giving an overview of the information that I gave you, okay, for the audience's sake, All right. and just so the players can know precisely how much you're fucking them over. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> so yeah, he, he read through both of Belial's journals first. Um, well, he read through the scroll first and was kind of unable to parse what it meant. Um, it, it was a scroll about very, very intricate resurrection, and he wasn't really able to figure out the, it it was very much like mechanics, like a, like a spell scroll, and it's the kind of thing that he just couldn't make heads or tails of, um, beyond what the general concept of it was. So then he moved on to Belial's journals, the one from the alternate timeline and the one from our timeline. Um, and kind of found they were largely coded uh, in two slightly different codes and the stuff that he could read in both of the journals that was in common um, was all about him so he has had a very emotional night (laughs) given uh given that content um but the the events in both matched up um the way each journal talked about him was very different um but still in in all realms very loving uh, eventually, at least, in the case of the alternate Belial's journal. Very, very loving. Um, and then he read through one of Yuli's journals. And... Sweats. Sweats. <laughs> um... He's decided he would like more context before discussing it with Yuli. Um, but suffice to say uh, that there is uh, a lot of evidence that uh, Yuli, Ilya, and Belial were involved in some real sketchy shit together. Do you think that's do you think that's good? Do you think that's enough? I do. I do think that that's enough. Yeah. So after a night of very heavy reading, um I would say if if Yuli as she said was going to like go out and check on Tink and make sure that he was okay, when yeah. she came out of the hotel room, he was probably like coming out of the baths like very clearly had freshly showered it's very early in the morning still uh which is unusual for him (laughs) um and is and is in some new clothes like he is fully like 
kind of looks more like a person than he has in the last few days. I will say that. I will also say that this is expedited by the fact that any of you who go into the main room will realize that there are several bags in the main room that seem fairly familiar. Someone has delivered your things. Wait, who's things? Things? Or all of your things. Oh, our our shopping things? Your shopping things, but also some things from the school, from the Lyceum, have been delivered. I'm head into the Tink is immediately the looking room around room. for Balthazar. Being like, who the fuck went I in go. my room? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna go look through, like go to go in and get my shit and go. Oh, thank God, clothing that is not this. <laughs> Monty's about to go golf again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see that these bags have been neatly packed, so someone's gone through your things. Um. And you hear some huffing and puffing coming from the hallway. Along with the... I'm gonna go follow whatever that sound is. Yeah, same here. <laughs> On sticking your heads out into the hallway, you see a very harangued and harassed looking person dragging what appears to be a large metal trunk behind them. And it is definitely scuffing the marble. They're dressed in a military uniform. But clearly not as highly ranked as Calriel. Or the woman who had been there last night. (laughs) Uh, uh, Do you need a hand with that? Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to help them bring it in. Oh, my word, please. Assistance Thank would be wonderful. You. Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Chaz. If you could give me a hand, I would be inordinately grateful. Yeah, uh, thanks. <laughs> gonna help person get up. Ah, mercy. Um, roll me a strength. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, great. <laughs> Just straight strength? Straight strength. Um, let me get Google Days. During Pride Month. <laughs> In our Pride Month, <laughs> a strength <laughs> check. I know, I know. No, a, a straight, straight chest. <laughs> a straight <laughs> strength test. So that's a 10. <laughs> With a 10, you make a move to go and grab the other handle to pick up the chest. Mm -hmm. And on a heave, the both of you you lift it up half a centimeter before it thunks back down on the floor with a And you see that the person who was dragging it along is just giving you quite a flat and unimpressed look. And it's just like, ah, thank you. (laughs) Smooth. Well done, Sam. (laughs) Why don't you try carrying it then, huh? (laughs) Fine, I will. Ugh. Gentlemen, there is no reason to fight over me. There is more enough to go around. <laughs> Monty has just gone very, very red. Yeah, I think too. <laughs> oh my god. Although, if you wish to take a crack at it yourselves, you are welcome to. I think we should just let Monty here carry it all by himself. So incredibly strong. <laughs> Monty just like looks oh, at Xanth and just like gives him the middle finger and it's just like Again. If if you are so inclined, please feel free. 
don't think it I sense. am not strong. I am a noodly boy. Fucker, I thing. know! That's what I did! <laughs> did you say that you have inspiration for strength? Oh, I have strength inspiration? Thank you. Where's my D8? Well, at least I did better than Zav. <laughs> Damn. What did you get? I got a 12. Because they rolled a Sorry. 1 on my, on my, uh, whatever you call it. As this person is watching you, you heft, and there's a, it moves like a centimeter. You know, maybe we should just let you or Yenna carry her own bags. You know, I, I am beginning like... to think that maybe he is not so strong. I've He's not... never claimed to be strong. Ever. And yet you offered your assistance. I I feel I like at this point... I thought I'd be a thing with uh, not the whole thing. <sighs> I, I think Tink's just like holding the like standing in the doorway with it open just like watching this happen say i feel point. like yuli and you're just observing <laughs> yeah we're both just like i'm not stupid enough to try and pick that up <laughs> well it must get into the room somehow and you see that this person goes towards the handle once more and gives a heft and there's a <laughs> as it drags across the marble and it drags a good couple feet or so. Or does Bonte it have to just go? has his hands over his ears because that's very, very unpleasant sounding. You know, I, I feel like Yenna wouldn't mind if we just left it outside. <laughs> yeah, she's she's fine. She's not at which very point, materialistic. <laughs> there's a call from down the hallway that's like, Hans, did you get the box? Because I've got the bags and I don't I, I don't know where the box went. And you you see that this person who is apparently hands is just like, oh, well I could have got the bag, uh, and just continues pulling the <laughs> much faster now. <laughs> He's just like, God, it looks like it, you're on, and just yeah, Monty, you are doing turns nothing. around. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing nothing. My ears hurt. I'm I'm. I've turned around and trying to like to sort of like maintain any sort of composure. Uh well, I'll help him push it from the other side, but I I'm not gonna be much help. Don't you yeah. don't you have mage hand? Mage Can't hand you can like... only carry ten pounds, dude. Like I can't <laughs> This person at this point is has like maneuvered the box in like a turn to try and shove it through the door and is like hefting it with a shoulder and is like, con delivery for her Madame Yena. <laughs> she's not. No. Yeah. I, I don't even know if she's here this morning, honestly. <laughs> of course, she's not here to uh, appreciate my efforts and keeps pushing. <laughs> <laughs> it gets stuck on the door jam and he's like, fuck. <laughs> can I can I at least help him like uh get just yeah. get it over the door jam just like get this the, get this poor boy back in the I feel like poor, if you poor take, person back in the room I feel like if you take all of us we can carry this inside <laughs> like if you all want to try I will give you advantage on a strength roll I will say at this point the other voice that was calling down the hall has materialized into another person also in military uniform who appears to be carrying two bags of what may be equipment, along with like a big like camping backpack, <laughs> just Oops, like hefted that. on her shoulders. <laughs> all right. Uh, it, are we all plus zero strength? Yeah, I'm, I'm a plus one, one strength. <laughs> uh, you're plus you're zero, yeah. I, plus one. I arguably am the strongest of us. I'm plus one. And you are the strongest of us. Uh, okay, I, I would say if you want advantage to just help push this thing in. <laughs> yes, yeah. please. I'm going to do another strength. Okay, and then my advantage. That's a 17. 
A 17? Yes. With a 17, like, just as Hans appears to put more leverage on it, you pick it up. And the sudden weightlessness of it combined with Hans's push. Roll me a deck save. Jesus Christ. Computer, wrong. <laughs> you want to take a guess what that is? That one. Yep. That one. Yeah. <laughs> Within Beautiful. that one, you all go tumbling through Amazing. the doorway. Beautiful. You go tumbling through the doorway, the box goes stunk. Um, and Hans is kind of draped over the box with a face smushed against Monty's knee, and the rest of you are just kind of scattered. We we oh, are we all fresh. <laughs> Not just the... You were all helping lift it, weren't you? I oh mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, T Tink was like kind of helping, but I think he's more of like a stumbled back and was like, "See, that was a bad idea. I shouldn't have touched it in the first place." Like, <laughs> yeah, because Monty was the one rolling. Um, Monty was like the linchpin, so it's gone flying the most. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, and just he's sort of tries to. <laughs> Don't think twice about it. Um, and Hans is attempting to get upright. <laughs> While um, the person that they are with is just standing in the doorway watching you all like, I see I missed a moment and I'm not sad about that. Yeah. Um, Yuli is going to conjure a dolly. <laughs> <laughs> what color hair does this dolly have? And just roll it over. No, not that God kind of dolly. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little shit. You are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. After after all that, Yuli will get this look on her face, like, "Oh, I can help with this." <laughs> and then, um, yeah, conjure conjure like an upright dolly and <laughs> and roll it over. Like, I think, um. Maybe this would help. Sorry. Could have done that a little earlier. I was. I, I was. I. Yeah. But it's okay. It's <laughs> fine. You've helped now. Um. I mean, once you you, you, all, you, you all just seemed like you ha had it so under control. You know, I. Uh... <laughs> Tink audibly snorts. <laughs> Monty's just like in in what in 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 what in what way did that look like? Like I had anything under control. <laughs> please don't please don't make me elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's just get this out of the way. And who are you? Oh, uh, to introduce myself, I am Private Hans. Private Wally Hans. That's right. It's a uh... puzzle. So we... you guys are. Do we recognize their uniforms? I was gonna say. Yeah, I won't even make you roll for this because it's not rare to see military officers around Karnak, especially because it's a port town that is that consists of a country bordered on both sides. The military presence can can be quite strong there. Um, these are quite clearly two members of the Karnak military. They are dressed in dress uniform, which is a little bit rarer. Yeah, I think Tink's just gonna kind of, like, look at them, look at all their stuff, and be like, so you're with my brother, then. And you see the, the woman that Hans is with kind of sidles into the room, trying not to make more of a mess than has already been made of the box and wanders over and like puts down the bags which clunk to the Thor with a thung, thung, far heavier than whatever was in that box and she dusts herself off and she's like we are under the command of General Cariel Goldpetal indeed and uh, even given the drama of yesterday we have been assigned as your private guard, personal guard. You should feel very honored. Yes, we're very good at our jobs. Mm -hmm. 
That's that's what that's yesterday? really okay. Like... You don't need to. <laughs> Sam, Sam, what happened yesterday? I, I'll tell you later, dude. It's Cal's in jail. What? Where's where the fuck is Balthazar? Where the fuck is Balthazar? Oh, are you on about your compatriot? I believe your friend is downstairs arguing with the carriage driver. <laughs> and uh, you see she holds out her hand and is like, I'm Private Fury. Vico Fury. Hey. Monty, ple pleasure to meet you. A pleasure to meet you too. See, at least, at least someone this morning has their manners on. <laughs> Tink will like roll his eyes and be like, "Tink, uh, Del, Tink, Tink." <laughs> oh, you're the general's brother. Yes. Right. Uh, I see. And uh, she gives you a bit of a once up and down, and is like, "Well." All of these are yours. And she motions towards the packs of equipment that she's hefted inside. We saw that you had copious amounts of uh, alchemical equipment. And we thought that it was best to bring it here just in case you needed any of it. He he definitely, like, as she's saying, like, this stuff is yours. He's like, yeah, I fucking knew that. And looks like he's just ready to, like, you know dig into her but then he's like no that is actually very useful thank you <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we are uh, glad to be of service it's um wonderful to finally meet a member of the general's family and you see hans is kind of shuffling inside and is trying to tow the bags a little bit further in <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry, like uh, a pleasure, a pleasure indeed. Um, and yet a dubious one, considering how we're meeting. Hmm? Um, just to clarify, I like bodyguards means we're gonna have two cops following us wherever we go. Uh a common misassertion. I am not a cop. I hate cops. I am a private. <laughs> Okay, what, what is... Yeah, private what? Yeah, like, what's what the is a I am a member of the military yet. So that's just what's like... The, just, yeah, that's just, just like... That's just, just like... Just a question, cops. though. How, are, how is the military any better than the cops? Aren't you just, like, cops on a bigger, more governmental scale, yeah, like, not on a small, like, I, city scale? I could not care less what laws you break. I'm just here to keep you safe. And Hans gives you a wink. I'm gonna make an insight check. <laughs> All the wisdom save. <laughs> wisdom oh save. <laughs> Who's rolling wisdom saves? All of us. I think it was a joke. <laughs> I hope. It was a joke. I'm can, very funny. Yes. Can, can I? Can I? Can I vibe check this guy? Yeah, yeah I'm gonna insight say... check this guy. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Uh, I didn't roll very well, but that's okay. That's a guy. I got a. <laughs> I got sixteen. I got a nat one. <laughs> I got a six. Okay. Any who got sixteen? I I got, I got uh, sixteen, but it wasn't insight. It was vibes. Just just catching a vibe. Did everybody? Right, okay. Um, sound off. Who rolled insight? Me. Uh, me and Dukes. And what, what did you two get? get? Six to six. <laughs> okay, with an insight of that. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know. <laughs> like, what What are you particularly trying to find out? I Is there something if... that you're trying to suss? I want to see if he's like a how do you do fellow kids, if he's like secretly a cop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they? you roll yeah. you rolled a six? Yeah. No, I rolled a ten. No, but... Xanth rolled a ten. Yeah. Uh, with a ten, this guy is not a cop. 
that wink <laughs> was far too much of a maybe I've done some shit in my time wink. Um, Yuli is just kind of trying to suss out if they are being genuine because they're both being very like I don't know bubbly I guess Yuli's trying to get a sense of whether or not they're kind of like putting on a, a personality Yuli with the, ro- with the role that you got you definitely think that they're putting on a personality great <laughs> <laughs> writes a notebook do not trust <laughs> Meanwhile, now, who was rolling? Meanwhile, Tink, Tink's rolling vibe. Yeah, Tink's like, all right, these two vibes. What are the vibes? I what rolled it... vibes too. I got a one. Uh, the vibes are bad. I I got a sixteen. Monty, like the vibes of these people, you are not certain that they are safe. Mainly because they are both armed, quite blatantly so. Um, I think the vibes that you get are that they are trying to make the best go of being here when they would rather be anywhere else. <laughs> okay, so they they trust us about as much as we trust them. Exactly, yes, that's definitely the kind of vibe that you are picking up on. Okay, okay. Yeah, he'll be uh, like, cool. Yeah. Um, I'll set my stuff up in my room. And also, can we uh, just, uh, ground rules, don't make a habit of going through our things, but especially my things. There's a lot of stuff in there that probably could explode. He, like, points at the bag <laughs> that Fury was, like, jostling around earlier. <laughs> well, you... You should find everything that was in your rooms. Um, we did have a minor problem actually clearing out your room. And you see that the moment Hans mentions a minor problem, Fury winces. Okay, so what broke? Oh, well, I mean, broke is a bit of a harsh word to use. Um, exploded is a bit more accurate. Okay, yeah, what? I don't know how that? that's... <laughs> he seems, like, un- unconcerned that something would explode. <laughs> they seem <laughs> fine. <laughs> so, so what, what was it? I mean... You have to understand, um, well, I'm not, uh, I'm not a specialist in, um, potions and lotions and kablooies, so I don't really rightly know. And you see Hans is just like, it was in a beaker. Other than that, oh, you're on your own. <laughs> He's just gonna like roll his eyes and he like doesn't really narrow it down, but it was probably fine. It's probably fine. There's not a lot of shit in there I really need. But you guys are feeling okay, right? <laughs> he like looking at them. You see this like wash of nervousness come over them both, and like Fury leans forward a little and it's just like Is there a reason that we shouldn't be? Hans, are you feeling okay? <laughs> and Hans, it like, puts a hand to the back of his head, and is just like, you know, I think I feel a bit faint. And they fall backwards immediately. Yeah, okay. I'll, uh, I'll find something for that. <laughs> I mean, he, like, <laughs> rather kind of lackadaisically opens one of the bags and tries to, like, sift through it. <laughs> In, in Hans having fallen backwards, they've kind of thrown themselves across a conveniently placed chaise lounge. Yeah, they're in the lounge. a very dramatic faint. It's, yeah, it's an incredibly dramatic faint that ends up with, like, one foot on the chaise and another foot on the coffee table. And Hans is like, oh, alas, I am dying. Oh, probably. 
Oh, wonderful. <laughs> At least it would make this day more interesting than holding your things from 4 a.m. Wasn't, uh, we didn't ask you to, so I wouldn't uh, blame us for that part specifically. You, Fury kind of clears her throat and is like, you might not have asked, and uh, the general might not have asked, but the captain did. So. Mm -hmm. Captain. The woman that you had spoken to last night. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, Miura. Yes. Auntie's just very confused about all of this. You guys don't really have to. You guys can just go. Oh, to we do. We do indeed. We have a report to you on you by the end of the day just to make sure that you're all right. Yeah. I mean, just let them know we didn't do anything interesting, and uh, I think we're all good. Yeah, we're very uninteresting. See, the way that you say uninteresting makes me sen <laughs> makes me feel like that's a lie. What what makes you that? <clears throat> just, just vibes. <laughs> Goins. Yeah. Um, have they made it obvious where they are keeping notes about us? Not obvious, obvious, but you do see like a little flip book thing is tucked away in Private Hans's top pocket. Okay. Can I try? Do I, I, can I, I try I and do. seal it? I knew it. That's they haven't written anything yet. Who <laughs> <laughs> really it, Monty? Still? Absolutely. Yeah. Go for it. Roll. <laughs> Roll. Yuli drops to her knees. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Yuli's like, God damn it, let me do the sleuthing. <laughs> well, I'm going to roll sleight of hand because if I'm trying to steal something, that just makes more sense. And I rolled a 15. Well, it depends how you're trying to steal it. He's trying to, like, slip it out of his pocket. <laughs> and how are you getting close enough to try and slip it out of his pocket? out of their pocket. He is in the middle or oh, yeah, sorry. in the middle of the room. There. Um I think I'm just going to I'm a sneaky boy. I'm just going to like while everyone else is talking just like sneak around behind behind them and then like go okay. up behind right. Hans. All the areas well, are red in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> well, thank you, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh roll me a roll me stealth. And I will roll perception for Hans. Okay. Rollies. That's a 19. That's a 4. Oh my oh, god. Too bad. I was hoping he'd get to flirt. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping Monty would be forced to flirt. And <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you roll for sleight of hand? Uh, that was a, hold on, that was a 15. A 15 for sleight of hand, okay. It's once again, it's always rollies when you're the DM. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Hans, Hans, why are you like this? That was a nine. There's another opportunity for flirting. You now have possession of a small notebook. It has a yellow cover with a smiley face drawn on it. Oh, charming. <laughs> I'm going to look through it. Granted, I'm standing behind. I'm standing behind Private Hans. I haven't, like, <laughs> gone anywhere. Han Hans is on a couch that's, like, next to a wall. So you would either have to be standing at the head or the foot of it. I'm standing at the at the head of it because I I imagined I'd like reached over and grabbed out of his pocket. <laughs> You're just like huddled, turned around, reading the book. <laughs> no, I'm not even turned around. I'm just standing at the at the head of the couch, just like flipping through the notebook. <laughs> oh my god. Um, in which case, I will need a sleight of hand from you to keep it out of sight. Or I was like, was the point just getting the book? <laughs> and that now that he's reading it, he's just reading it in plain day. 
um let me just see sleight of hand just like that's mm -hmm. 21. god damn it hans just <laughs> isn't looking Monty, you see a collection of notes that are all written. What languages do you speak? Better question, what languages don't I speak? Um, so I speak common, draconic, druidic, dwarvish, elvish, orc, and thieves camp. What French fuck? is elvish. <laughs> French elvish. <laughs> French okay. is elvish. French is elvish, okay. French is elvish. Uh, you recognize it as a kind of um, provincial elvish on the outskirts of Karnak. So probably um, Hans in Hans's like accent sounds incredibly like a hick because it's used generally in like farming communities on the outskirts of Karnak. Adorable. Um, these farming communities, uh, would they be, like, from my area of, of Connark or Car uh, Karnak, um, or, uh, like, the, the more elvish roots area? Oh, but this poor provincial town, uh, it would be very <laughs> close to where Monty grew up. In fact, Monty, you probably would have known... Um, a couple of like the staff who had similar accents to Hans. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what does this say? That is indeed the question. Roll an intelligence check. I'm rolling good. Okay, but what did you roll? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing math. Uh, math. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, with that... 16 you... plus 2, I need to do math. <laughs> oh my goodness. With the intelligence check, you can, like, pass out and connect the elvish slash French that Hans has written in to the elvish that you know, which is a, a slightly different form of elvish that's usually used among the nobles. And <laughs> several of these notes appear to be like minutes from important military meetings. A couple of which are talking about um, keeping eyes on several trade routes into and out of Karnak. Um, another one is about cases of missing persons. And as you're like flipping through, there are a couple of other cases that you kind of come by. Um, and then it's it, like the last entry that you find is it just says, For I am, and I am pissed to be a lick. <laughs> Good. Do we notice that Monty uh, just stole this out roll of me, hand? Roll me a perception. Okay. Oh, I keep forgetting D&D Beyond is not working. Hold on. <laughs> uh, 14. No, you cannot, Zance. <laughs> you don't see it. You do not see it. So, so here's the thing. I rolled really bad, but my passive would have been enough to see Monty go over there and take the book, just not enough to see him reading it. I feel like we've had this conversation I know. so many times. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not trying to look at anything. Roll. Are you now just doing perception by not rolling perception? <laughs> no, I rolled perception. I rolled shitty. <laughs> <laughs> then no. <laughs> I'm gonna now that I've now that I've read it. And I've I've parsed a great a, a pretty good portion of it. Um, I'm going to uh, try and sleight of hand it back into oh my god um, his pocket, 
Then back into Hans's pocket, their pocket. Okay. Roll sleight of hand for me. You don't want to know what I got. I got a 24. You got a 24? Mm hmm. I've been rolling for both Hans and Fury, and neither of them could see you take it. Fury sees you trying to put it back and is like, uh, uh, Did you just. Did you steal that? And you see her just kind of scuttle over, and Monty, she picks you up by the arm. <laughs> how, how tall is she? Um, she's about six foot five. Okay, oh. so she's she's a little taller oh. than I am. <laughs> just picks me up. Sorry, I just had a reaction. I... Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, you, like, we, we, huh? we heard okay. that you had a reaction. <laughs> She specifically uh, picks you up by the hand that is holding the notebook and plucks it from your hand. You can do a, a you can roll to avoid this if you would like to, but I will state that she rolled a nat twenty on her strength check. Oh, I'm not good. There's no way I can beat that. Like yeah, yeah. No, we're gonna we're just gonna let it happen. That Monty's just like dangling by his wrist. Uh, mm -hmm. I, know, I didn't. Like... I didn't see that. Right, and um, I'm I was just, to see. I was borrowing it. I had every intention of returning it. As you could see, you caught me in the act of returning it. You know, I did honestly, indeed. I feel like maybe you guys can stay if you if you just keep doing shit like that. If you just hold on to him so he can't get away. Like I feel like. It might be might be worth it. Honestly, yeah, it that, like that you've might already not... tried it. Oh, for, I mean, she motions to the rope harness that is around. <laughs> oh <thing>. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a a little. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little. Yeah, why am I wearing this? Yeah, I think Sam did I that. Why have a harness? <laughs> I. When you say that I, I did this, it makes it sound much worse than it is. <laughs> Tink snickers mean, while he keeps going through the like some really kinky shit, Sam. Like, I think you're supposed to ask consent first. I literally told you you were a cat. Some person. I literally told what? you you were a cat for a long time. It's. I just put a leash on you while you were a cat. At this point, Hans kind of uh, sits a bit more upright on the on the chaise lounge and is like uh, do you pardon the intrusion in what is quite clearly a very um, entertaining quarrel uh, but isn't this supposed to be another of your number does the the uh, forgive me there is the moon company daughter Company? Uh, Mun, yeah, no, Mun. she's out. You, you had her bag earlier, the crate. Right, I see. Uh, forgive the mispronunciation. Um, hmm. Yes, because we have brought her things. Oh dear, do you know where she is gone? It's not my job to keep track of her. <laughs> I see that this job is going to be precisely as awful as I thought it was going to be. Um, across town. <laughs> <laughs> Kiana. Hi. You are trying to make your way to talk to your mother's secretary. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody around that I can ask for directions? That is the question. Hmm. There is not. Can you hmm. roll me another survival? How long have I been lost? I've been oh, lost at this point three. for about an hour. It's oh. a three. Oh my goodness. At this point, you stumble into a room 
that is definitely not the room you are looking for, but definitely has someone in it. And this person from behind their desk, you assume it's their desk, they're sitting behind it, looks up and is rather like, I wasn't aware we had any visitors. Hi, hello. Um, um, my name hello. Is, uh, um, see his little bow. He kind of stumbles to his feet a little, tripping over them as he stands and returns the bow quite low. Miss Yenna, um, why are you in my dad's office? Um, your father's office? Who, wait, whose office is this? This is the office of the ambassador. Oh, well, that, that could be helpful for later. I'm not trying to be in your dad's office. I'm just trying to find... Um... So I shouldn't I shouldn't call the guards. That's not something that I should do. No, why would you call the guards on me? Well, there's only one Yenna that I know of who is said to be studying in Karnak. Yeah, probably. And I wasn't aware that she was a tiefling. Do I know who this person is? Roll for it. Roll me history. Oh, that's not good. That's a three plus six, a nine. You have never seen this person before in your life. You know that they, you, like, you can pass certain things about them from, like, their appearance. They are dressed um, very similarly to what would be the current fashions of Gwekang. Mm. Yeah. She just sort of, like, looks at... Is, is this a, a male? Sorry. Yes, I, yes. Looks at him and is just sort of like, okay, well, it's not my fault that you don't, like, keep up with the gossip but yes you yeah, know and when is it doing and just sort of like is like very like angry and like hissing it at him please i meant absolutely no offense none at all i just <laughs> this isn't information that i was aware of and who are you oh uh my name is Young Dai. What what is this individual like? What does this individual look like? Was that? Mm hmm. Um, he's quite tall. Mm -hmm. I would say he's probably about five ten, five eleven. So he's definitely taller than Yenna on the scale. Okay. Um, also quite like fine boned, square jaw, uh, dark hair. Hmm. Approximately human, probably. Okay. I'm just sort of just staring at him like, okay. Well, you are of sufficient rank to escort me to uh, the communication rooms, if you don't mind. Oh, I am. Am I? Mm-hmm. Ambassador Sun is about right. Um, I think we have our cords crossed, our cables mixed. Hmm. How so? I'm not sure I owe you anything. I'm still not even sure not that Not even you're... for the offense? I beg your pardon? You said that you were going to call the guards on me? Simply because I don't know if you are actually the Yenna that I know of. If you are the Yenna that I know of, well then, 
all due respect is due unto you. Um, based on the name, because I, I'm double checking. I don't think I recognize this name. You do not recognize this name. I'm like, I don't know why you would even know of me unless by reputation, which you should then be much more respectful. Indeed, but again, the Yenna that I know of is not, as far as I am aware, a tiefling. Again, not my problem that you don't keep up with the gossip. I have never heard of you. And that means you haven't made your way in the world, therefore, I outrank you. What guild are you part of? I'm not. Oh. So you literally have no rank other than your father's coattails. That would be one assumption, yes. Hmm. There are other assumptions that you could make, which is that I am not associated to any one guild. I'm not sure I understand. You have to be part of a guild to achieve, achieve merit. Well, yes. You have to be associated with at least one. Yes, so which guilds? If any. I'm sorry, you keep talking as though I owe you information. I don't know who you are. You're claiming to be the ambassador. I don't you. know who you are. You're claiming to be Yenna. And the, the only wrong. Yenna that I know of belongs to the business guilds. Yes, I do. Believe I am a journeyman at this point. And do do enlighten me, but um He just kind of motions to all of you. What? Well, without being able to corroborate your identity. I really don't think you should be in these offices. I think I should call the guard. And he heads towards the door. He just sort of like rolls her eyes. And she's pulling out her ID. She's very annoyed though that this like random person is accosting her. Because the idea that someone hasn't heard of her like change <laughs> is like mind boggling to her. Like she, she knows that that's like a big enough deal that she had to be sent here. So someone who's supposed to be like an ambassador's child, like not knowing this is weird. It is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so she's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> As you go to get out your ID, mm -hmm. you see he places his hand on the wall and there is a strange flash of light. Hmm. Okay. And a small... Oh, shit. And suddenly you're not looking at the same person you were looking at oh. a second ago. Uh-oh. You are now looking at someone who is slightly smaller, much scruffier, and probably shouldn't be here. Oh, well, that's fun. <laughs> what spells do I have? <laughs> shatter. I do have shatter, that is correct. Um, probably not going to shatter, though. Um, let's see. Uh, Yana's going to quickly back out of the room, grab the door, slam it closed, and uh, cast Arcane Lock on the door. Just to be clear, you're locking him in there and you in the hallway. Uh, so that they can't get at her and hopefully trapping him inside. Okay. Yeah. Roll me a deck check to see if you can um, cast that before he can run. Sure. Okay. Dex check is a 13. You can do it. It was an 11. So you see this startled expression 
on his face as you kind of just fling yourself through the door and slam it. And then the moment that you cast lock, mm -hmm. there is a surge of weave against the door and alarms start going off. Okay, cool. Fun. And it's just going to be like in the hallway, like weird, almost T-posing, just like hands out like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> just, and that like, uh. that is where we're going to leave this week. How dare. How dare you. <laughs> Yenna T posing yeah, for welcome. dominance. Exactly. Yenna T posing for dominance. Alarms going off. The sound of guards rushing towards you. And a stranger locked in a room. And that's where we're leaving it for this week. Thank you all at home for uh, listening along and for watching. Uh, we hope that you had fun. As much fun as we did. Before we take off, I would like to thank our patrons without whom none of this would be possible. Your continued support means the world, and I'm sure that you've seen like the little NPC portraits this session and last session. We've been able to instigate those because of uh, Patreon contributions and such and so forth, so thank you guys. Um, if you like what you have watched tonight, please... It's very hard to throw the French accent out the window once <laughs> I've started doing it. But <laughs> if you like what you watch tonight, please consider giving us a follow or maybe supporting us via a subscribe or via our Patreon in which we have uh, behind the scenes content, homebrew content. Um, we have a spice rack and we have a bunch of off camera scenes that can sometimes explain things that won't be happening on screen it just fleshes out the world a little bit more um and go check out our discord we'd love to see you there yeah you should also check out our sister shows yes yeah, yeah. we have one tomorrow night i'm also on it i play gg it is a city of miss game uh sort of dm'd by uh, Alex Nguyen, Fabs is on it, who you also know if you've been a part of the channel for a while. Um, yeah, we're getting close to finishing our first case, so exciting times to be joining us. Yeah, and if you join us... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, we play tomorrow at 8pm uh, Eastern. Yeah, and if you join us on Thursdays at 8pm Eastern, we have Reckoning in Dawn Shadow, which is our newest game DM'd by Fabs, um, by Fabian. See, it's very hard to leave it behind. <laughs> um, but it's a fantastic game. It's D&D &D 5e, um, which follows like a world that is set in a post-colonial Asian setting. Um, the cast is absolutely fantastic, and I've been watching it, and I'm hooked. So I thoroughly recommend giving that a watch. Yeah. The plot, it thickens. <laughs> Uh, did you mention that we're doing Sign Up for Vampire? Yeah, yeah, we have another show that will be coming um, along soon, which is Vampire the Masquerade, which we are currently casting for. So if you're interested, please head on over to our Twitter, where we are currently doing a casting call. If you want yeah. uh, the chance to play with some of us, yeah, yeah, go and yeah. sign up. I Can recommend. Danny and Blue Jay. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna make very hot vampires. So. Oh. Very hot vampires. Like we've seen some of the super hot VR. vampires. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I finally got approval, so super hot vampire incoming. Oh, oh, amazing. oh nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's that's it from us. So if you want to see more Hellions, join us on Mondays. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Keep we'll rolling. See you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Rollin', 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 boy.